How's it going? Uh, I have to switch to try to to try to get good light. One second. Oh my goodness, it's kind of blowing me out. I'm, you know, is that better? I don't know. I'll just, I'll I'll just have it dramatic. How's that? We'll just have the light dramatic. So the James O'Keefe videos are clearly blowing up the internet right now. And I want to talk about what everybody is missing. And and this is really the most important thing going on in the videos. You need to understand this. So in order for me to explain it, what, what everybody's missing is the indetectable fraud machine that the Democrats have set up. Remember that phrase, indetectable fraud machine. Okay? So... <clears throat> The reason I understand this is because back in 2010, late 2010, my life changed forever when I interviewed Andrew Breitbart, uh, founder of Breitbart News, obviously, and started working on a story about the Pigford Black Farmers scandal. And uh, we, I wrote a lot about that. And it was a passion project for Andrew and at the time, I was writing for the Huffington Post, and Andrew hired me uh, because I was, uh, at the time, a, a, a Democrat who had done work for Move On and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll put out a video with Andrew talking about that in it after I'm done with this quick periscope. But remember the phrase, indetectable fraud machine. I'll get to that in a second. I'm, I'm talking about Pigford for a reason. Because at the time, I was a Democrat, and... I looked into the story, and Pigford was about uh, giving farmers recompense for the, uh, I'm trying to figure out a way, a way to make this short, but basically they had been screwed by the USDA, they'd been screwed by the Ag Department, they had been uh, denied loans for reasons that were racist, and then they were going to get paid back. And what happened was that settlement went from a group of about, you know, a few hundred farmers who were going to get a decent settlement. Each one of them was going to get hundreds of thousands of dollars to a uh, indetectable fraud machine that was set up. What happened was they said, well, you don't need to prove you were a farmer. You need to prove you tried to be a farmer and we'll give you $50,000. And, well, how do you prove you tried to be a farmer? You just say. You didn't need to show anything. You could say, well, I, I went to the USDA office, and they just threw my application away. And so with no proof whatsoever, they would give you $50,000. So then it went from, like, a few hundred farmers getting a decent settlement to literally billions of dollars, billions of dollars in... Uh, Anybody, if you were black, anybody, and, and I have uh, interviews I've done, I'll try to put this up too, with the USDA officials who were like, people who would have been 12 when, when they say they went in got settlements. People were getting 50,000. I, I looked into it. People were getting, in some houses, 20, 30 checks for $50,000 each. See, because, the, and this, the, let's get to the indetectable fraud machine in the O'Keefe videos. I want you to understand how this works. What they did in Pigford was they set up a system that was by its very nature impossible to prove. They set up an indetectable, there was no way to detect it, fraud machine. You'd have to basically get a person to admit they'd committed fraud. Or you'd have to look, you know, you'd have to, it was very hard. Because the reason people would get 20 checks at a house is every brother, sister, cousin. You could collect for deceased people on Pigford. You could say, and by the way, then they did the same thing for women. If I was smart and dishonest, I could have made hundreds of thousands of dollars because I would have filed a, pig, uh, a, a woman Pigford claim and say my mom tried to farm right before she died. This is what people would literally do. And they went around teaching classes on how to do it. They set up a system that it was impossible to prove fraud, almost impossible. And then when the Pigford story first came out, the people defending it, which were, dem and I was stunned people were defending it. This is the reason I ran screaming from the left. I couldn't believe people were defending this 
Media Matters defended this. Uh, friends of mine, Eric Bowler, who was a friend of mine, a guy I knew who'd written about me, defended this Pigford indetectable fraud machine. I thought everybody was against corruption. What I learned was, by the way, retweet this, retweet this. You gotta, I want people to know what's going on in the O'Keefe videos because what they don't show necessarily, it's a sting operation. I'm going to tell you what the O'Keefe videos show. It's a sting operation. They don't go through and do the illegal thing. It doesn't admit to some illegal stuff in there, clearly. But the biggest thing that's very clear, this is the point. This is what you want to retweet. The Democrats have set up an indetectable voter fraud machine. That's what they've set up. The Democrat Party, the reason they don't want to require voter ID, it has nothing to do with civil rights. It has nothing to do with defending the rights of people. It's because they want a machine that's impossible to detect. That's what they've done. They did that in Pigford. Let me just cap off the Pigford story. After being assailed as racist for a couple of years, and after Andrew Breitbart's death, the New York Times, Sharon Lafriere, who was a reporter there, uh, got in touch, and I gave her everything that I'd had. I spent a long time. We proved on Pigford. You See, you can't prove the fraud in an indetectable fraud machine by looking for fraud. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You can't prove, I'll say it again, because I want you to understand this. You can't prove the fraud in an indetectable fraud machine by looking for incidents of fraud because they've been rendered indetectable by the people who set up the system. Does that make sense? Think about it. If you set up a system that's almost impossible to prove fraud, right, you're not going to find very many instances of it because you can't. So let's talk about voter ID. This is what their new talking point is. Oh, well, there's no, it, it's rare. It rarely happens. You know why? Because you can't prove it. See, here's the thing. If you had voter ID requirements, you could then prove it. That would then work, right? But they don't. They set it up so that they, they don't require voter ID. And then what happens is then they say, oh, well, see, there's no incidence of fraud. They do this to defend dismantling the machine. That's what they do. What is clearly discussed on the videos is they are completely aware of figuring out ways to work around the system. They're, they're, they're completely aware. They're having long conversations about it. They don't want to make fraud impossible. There's no point on anything that O'Keefe shows, and they don't care. Try, try, what, with the most honest statement on there is we need to win an election. We don't care about legal or ethical. They don't. They, they, these people don't care about legal or ethical. In this case, they're Democrats, and Democrats are worse about it, in my opinion. But lots of establishment people are in favor of these indetectable fraud machines. And they've gotten good at setting them up. They've gotten good at setting them up. And then the way they defend them is they go, well, look, there's very few cases of voter fraud. Yeah, I know, because you don't require voter ID. So think about this just practically. Think about it from a practical standpoint. If I don't have to show ID when I go to the polling place, how are you going to figure out frauds occurred? There's no way to figure out that the frauds occurred. If I go and I vote under somebody else's name and address, you'd have to do a lot of investigation. And the significant thing is that Fovel, who, who quit, who was fired, forgive me, who was fired the first day, says on there, uh, I think he says it in the second video, or maybe, maybe I forget it's the second or first one. He says, I think like an investigator. This is, this is significant. This is what the indetectable fraud machine is. He says, I like to think like an investigator, and I think backwards from how could they prove this. Now, I've written about this indetectable fraud machine at Pigford for years now, <clears throat> and I've written about some election issues. My friend Jay Christian Adams is the man on this election law center. Jay Christian's the man on this. But... <clears throat> Also not, I, and I, I said attention to Dave Weigel because I noticed Dave, who, who I like and, and personally, and I've hung out with Dave. Uh, he, he's, he's on the, in an argument with, with James, and really I'm trying to appeal to 
the reasonableness, because I've dealt with Dave. Dave can be a reasonable guy uh, and knows his progressive rock music, clearly. Um, but Democrats need to wake the hell up to this. Just to either admit that you're in favor of voter fraud, that that's what you're in favor of, right? Either admit it or do what I did. And, and that required me leaving the left. You have to understand, I feel badly for uh, honest people on the left. I had, I had to quit <laughs> my, my writing gig at Huffington Post eventually. And like Andrew says, you give up these great cocktail parties. It's not fun. I mean, if you're, if you, you all the stuff, all the stuff you're seeing in WikiLeaks, the parties and all that, the access to politicians, that's fun when you're a reporter. That's nice to have. But at the end of the day, all that you have is your integrity and your soul, right? At the end of the day, you either supported this corrupt system, you either supported these bastards, or you spoke up and said something. You either supported the establishment Democrats and Republicans ruining the world, starting wars for profit, and then profiting off the cheap labor by the refugees that war created. At the end of the day, as a writer or journalist, that's what you got. You either supported that machine or you opposed it. That's it. That's it. And when they build these indetectable fraud machines, it's your job as a reporter. It's your job as a reporter to try to figure out how to subvert the system and prove the fraud. You can't do it by saying, oh, well, gee, no, look, there's very few, oh, my gosh, there's very few arrests, or there's very few, right, I know. So in Pigford, we had to prove it without being able to point, because here's the thing, here's just one last point on this. If you're a journalist, if you're like an investigator, are you a stenographer or an investigator? If you're a stenographer, it, I, I'm not knocking it, I'm glad people report it, but reporting how many people got murdered in Chicago this past weekend is not investigative reporting. Okay? I want to be clear on the difference. When something is obvious, it's not investigative. So if 19 people got shot to death in Chicago this past weekend, and you report that, I report some stuff that's not investigative. I do plenty of work that's not investigative. But that's not investigative. If you look at a, a thermometer and the, it says the, the temperature is 40, you know, 47 degrees, which it is in Sioux Falls right now. Ah, but if it says 47 degrees and you report the weather is 47 degrees, that's not investigative weather reporting, right? That's not that what that is. Investigative journalism is when you can't get that information. You can't get an accurate count of how many people were involved in fraud. So you have to prove it by going around it. So Democrats have set up an indetectable voter fraud system. And this goes, the rot here goes down to low-level employees and people like Fovel to President Obama. President Obama, as a Democrat, is part of building this indetectable fraud machine, just as President Obama and Eric Holder were part of the Pigford fraud. They absolutely knew what's going on. And the Pigford fraud started, by the way, in Arkansas. And why did it start in Arkansas? I retweet this. Bill and Hillary Clinton. That's why. They got all kinds. Arkansas is one of the biggest places in the country where Pigford fraud occurred. And the whole justification for it, by the way, of letting people who'd never farmed a day in their life getting $50,000 was reparations. And we captured that on audio. We had to do a lot of work on the Pigford story. And the media ignored it. And after it came out in the New York Times, and retweet this, this is really important. I want you to understand the pressure that New York, <clears throat> New York Times reporters are under. Sharon LaFerrere told me she'd never had pushback on a story like she did from the Obama administration on Pigford. Busting the establishment is a matter of busting these indetectable fraud machines. It's a matter of rooting them out and doing the work to report them. But President Obama is 100% in favor of voter fraud, which is why he came out yesterday and said, oh, there's no such thing as voter fraud. That's what's going on. They know exactly, these people are not stupid. They know exactly what it is. And what they do is they use rhetoric.
to try to continue their corruption. So this is really important. Please retweet this. Please let people know what's go really going on. I'll try to expand on this. I got stuff to do right now, so I'm not going to take any questions, but I'll take questions uh, on Twitter if you have questions or anything like that. If you have comments, say anything like that. I'll try to repeat, uh, retweet a couple of things. Andrew Breitbart talking about me and, and Pigford, uh, a couple of Pigford interviews that I did. That's what you have to do. You have to do the work to figure out what's going on. James O'Keefe has uh, proven this. The video that he put out a week or so ago with the guy from New York talking about bussing people around. This is, and like I say, I don't know if James, I've not talked to James about, I got sleep in my eyes still, forgive me. Uh, people wonder if I sleep because they see me up at like 3 in the morning and then they see me at like 9 in the morning. And the whole trick is I do sleep, but I sleep in like three hour increments usually. Three, four and a half hours, something like that. 90 minute increments, circadian ribbon, look into it. Um, anyway, that's it. Love you guys. Spread the word. We've got an election to win, and then we have to dismantle every single one of these. Again, love you guys. Bye. Uh, here we go. See, i got to tell you, it's harder than it looks to finish these podcasts, but I did it. Here we go. Broadcast. I'm about to hit the stop button. Bye.